Welcome back. Today we are making this absolutely delicious golden berry chantilly cake. We're starting off by making our berry filling. We're adding two cups of fresh or frozen mixed berries into a pan along with a half a cup of domino sugar golden sugar. We're going to mix this together over a medium heat until that sugar dissolves and the berries start to cook down. So once the mixture comes to a simmer just like this, it's time to add in our cornstarch slurry. To do this, we're adding one tablespoon of water into one tablespoon of cornstarch, mixing it together and then adding it straight into our berry mixture. After adding this, you want to make sure you're constantly stirring your berries so that none of the sugar burns and your mixture is going to start to thicken. You know that it's thick enough when you can drag your spatula through it and see the bottom of the pan. This took about five minutes for me, but it can vary if you're using fresh or frozen berries. So once my mixture was nice and thick, I added it into a separate bowl and I added one tablespoon of fresh lemon juice along with two teaspoons of fresh lemon zest. I mixed this together and then popped my bowl into the fridge and covered it to let it chill and thicken up. You can totally make this berry filling in advance, so feel free to do that if you want to break up the process. While my filling chilled, I worked on my cake batter. Our first step is to sift our dry ingredients into our bowl, so I'm sifting in three cups of cake flour along with three cups of domino sugar golden sugar. Our final two dry ingredients are two and a half teaspoons of baking powder and one teaspoon of salt. Once all those dry ingredients are sifted into our mixing bowl, it's time to add our butter. So we're gonna use our whisk attachment to mix our butter in and we're adding one cup of unsalted butter. I like to add this in chunks just to make it easier to mix in and we're mixing this on a low speed until the mixture looks a little bit like sand. So it takes a minute or two to get this consistency but this is the look that you're after. Now it's time to add our wet ingredients. We start off by adding one cup of pasteurized egg whites or the equivalent of about seven egg whites. Once that's fully mixed in, we add our remaining wet ingredients. This includes one and a half cups of full fat sour cream and the eighth of a cup of vegetable oil or any flavorless oil and then one teaspoon of vanilla extract. We mix this on a low speed here and our goal is not to over mix our batter. So once it's been going for a little bit, we can see there's a bit of vanilla still stuck on the sides. I like to turn off my mixer and just use a rubber spatula to scrape around the sides to help get everything mixed together without over mixing our batter. Once it looks like all of our ingredients are incorporated, it's time to add this into our prepared cake pans. One batch of batter can be used to fill four 7-inch cake pans or three 8-inch cake pans. So I've lined and sprayed my cake pans and now I'm pouring my batter evenly between them. A great trick to make sure you have the same amount of batter in each pan is to use a digital scale to weigh them. Once my pans are ready to go, I popped them in my preheated 350 degree oven and started working on my frosting. I began by separating seven eggs to give me seven egg whites, and then I poured those into my mixing bowl along with two cups of domino sugar golden sugar. I gave this mixture a quick whisk by hand just to get that sugar incorporated with the egg whites. Then I placed my bowl over a double boiler until the mixture reached about 160 degrees, which is enough to make the egg whites safe to eat and to dissolve the sugar. I then whisked this mixture on a high speed for about 10 minutes until I had a meringue that had stiff peaks. It can be hard to know just by looking at your bowl if your meringue is ready, but a great test is to take your whisk and hold it upside down and see if your meringue can defy gravity. If it can stand up on its own, then it's definitely stiff enough and you can start to add in your butter. It's really important that your butter is properly at room temperature, which means that it's still a little bit firm to the touch, but you can press your finger into it with a little bit of effort. Once your butter is mixed in, it's time to whisk together our mascarpone cheese along with our cream cheese. So I add them into a separate bowl and whisk by hand until the mixture is nice and smooth. This takes a little bit of time and is a bit of an arm workout, but you really want to make sure that they're really silky smooth before you add them into your frosting. Once both of these are into our mixing bowl, I like to mix the frosting on high for a couple minutes until it's fluffy and they're fully incorporated. And then we add in our last two ingredients, which are a quarter of a teaspoon of salt and two teaspoons of vanilla extract. So at this point in time, I like to mix the mixture on low just to make it smooth and make sure that that vanilla extract gets fully incorporated and none of it splatters out of our bowl. So at this point in time, you should be left with some really fluffy, delicious mascarpone cream cheese frosting. I'm going to add about two thirds of this frosting into a large piping bag that I added a round frosting tip to. But if you don't have that type of frosting tip, you can also just cut an opening at the bottom of the bag that's about two centimeters wide. So now that our frosting is ready to go, all that's left to do is level our cake layers. I'm using a serrated knife here and just rotating the cake layer until the top kind of pops off. I recommend leveling your cake layers for two reasons. Number one, by removing the caramelization on the top, you're going to allow your berry filling to seep into your cake layer. And number two, by having them nice and flat, it makes it a lot easier to stack this cake. It ends up being pretty tall and your life will be much easier if you level them. So now that we've put in all the hard work, it's time for the fun part and we get to assemble our cake. To do this, I've piped a pretty generous ring of our mascarpone cream cheese frosting around our cake layer and then I'm adding a third of our berry filling inside of that. 
I also chose to top this with some more fresh berries just to add an extra texture component to this cake, but that's optional. I topped this with a generous scoop of our frosting and then smoothed it out using a small offset spatula. You want to be careful as you do this because some of those berries will be sticking up. I piped one more ring of frosting around the side just to really lock that filling in place, and then I repeated this process with our remaining cake layers. It's super important that you add that frosting ring around your cake layers to keep your filling in place, otherwise it can ooze out of your frosting and you can be left with a huge mess when you try to decorate. Once all my cake layers were stacked, I did a quick check to make sure that my cake layers were nice and upright. I like to use my bench scraper and just gently push the sides of the cake to make sure that they're all aligned. I decided to decorate this cake in a semi-naked style, so I used the overhanging frosting just to smooth around the cake and create essentially a crumb coat, and then smooth that with my bench scraper. I decided to leave a textured edge around the rim, and then just decorate the top with a semicircle of fresh berries and some edible flowers. And just like that, our golden berry chantilly cake is complete. And thank goodness, because I could not wait to dive into this cake. The hints of molasses from the golden sugar used throughout this cake pair so well with that fresh berry filling and with the mascarpone cream cheese frosting. It was absolutely delicious. You can learn more about Domino Sugar Golden Sugar at www.dominosugar.com.